The Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Genesis chapters 27 and 28 from the Old Testament When Isaac was old and his eyes were so weak that he was almost blind, he called his older son Esau and said to him, My son, here I am, Esau replied. Isaac said, Since I am so old, I could die at any time. Therefore, take your weapons, your quiver and your bow, and go out into the open fields and hunt down some wild game for me. Then prepare for me some tasty food, the kind I love, and bring it to me. Then I will eat it so that I may bless you before I die. Now Rebekah had been listening while Isaac spoke to his son Esau. When Esau went out to the open fields to hunt down some wild game and bring it back, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, Look, I overheard your father tell your brother Esau, Bring me some wild game and prepare for me some tasty food. Then I will eat it and bless you in the presence of the Lord before I die. Now then, my son, do exactly what I tell you. Go to the flock and get me two of the best young goats. I'll prepare them in a tasty way for your father, just the way he loves them. Then you will take it to your father. Thus he will eat it and bless you before he dies. But Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, Jacob protested to his mother, Rebekah. And I have smooth skin. My father may touch me, then he'll think I'm mocking him, and I'll bring a curse on myself instead of a blessing. So his mother told him, Any curse against you will fall on me, my son. Just obey me. Go and get them for me. So he went and got the goats and brought them to his mother. She prepared some tasty food, just the way his father loved it. Then Rebekah took her older son Esau's best clothes, which she had with her in the house, and put them on her younger son Jacob. She put the skins of the young goats on his hands and the smooth part of his neck. Then she handed the tasty food and the bread she had made to her son Jacob. He went to his father and said, My father. Isaac replied, Here I am. Which are you, my son? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I've done as you told me. Now sit up and eat some of my wild game so that you can bless me. But Isaac asked his son, How in the world did you find it so quickly, my son? Because the Lord your God brought it to me, he replied. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come closer so I can touch you, my son. And know for certain if you really are my son, Esau. So Jacob went over to his father, Isaac, who felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's, but the hands are Esau's. He did not recognize him because his hands were hairy, like his brother Esau's hands. So Isaac blessed Jacob. Then he asked, Are you really my son Esau? I am, Jacob replied. Isaac said, Bring me some of the wild game for me to eat, my son. Then I will bless you. So Jacob brought it to him, and he ate it. He also brought him wine, and Isaac drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, Come here and kiss me, my son. So Jacob went over and kissed him. When Isaac caught the scent of his clothing, he blessed him, saying, Yes, my son smells like the scent of an open field, which the Lord has blessed. May God give you the dew of the sky and the riches of the earth and plenty of grain and new wine. May people serve you and nations bow down before you. You will be Lord over your brothers and the sons of your mother will bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed and those who bless you be blessed. Isaac had just finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had scarcely left his father's presence when his brother Esau returned from the hunt. He also prepared some tasty food and brought it to his father. Esau said to him, My father, get up and eat some of your son's wild game, 
then you can bless me. His father Isaac asked, who are you? I am your firstborn son, he replied, Esau. Isaac began to shake violently and asked, then who else hunted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it just before you arrived and I blessed him. He will indeed be blessed. When Esau heard his father's words, he wailed loudly and bitterly. He said to his father, bless me too, my father. But Isaac replied, your brother came in here deceitfully and took away your blessing. Esau exclaimed, Jacob is the right name for him. He has tripped me up two times. He took away my birthright and now look, he has taken away my blessing. Then he asked, have you not kept back a blessing for me? Isaac replied to Esau, look, I made him Lord over you. I've made all his relatives, his servants, and provided him with grain and new wine. What is left that I can do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, do you have only that one blessing, my father? Bless me too. Then Esau wept loudly. So his father Isaac said to him, Indeed, your home will be away from the richness of the earth and away from the dew of the sky above. You will live by the sword, but you will serve your brother. When you grow restless, you will tear off his yoke from your neck. So Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing his father had given his brother. Esau said privately, the time of mourning for my father is near. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. When Rebekah heard what her older son Esau had said, she quickly summoned her younger son Jacob and told him, Look, your brother Esau is planning to get revenge by killing you. Now then, my son, do what I say. Run away immediately to my brother Laban in Haran. Live with them for a little while until your brother's rage subsides. Stay there until your brother's anger against you subsides and he forgets what you did to him. Then I'll send someone to bring you back from there. Why should I lose both of you in one day? Then Rebekah said to Isaac, I am deeply depressed because of these daughters of Heth. If Jacob were to marry one of these daughters of Heth who live in this land, I would want to die. So Isaac called for Jacob and blessed him. Then he commanded him, you must not marry a Canaanite woman. Leave immediately for Paden Aram. Go to the house of Bithuel, your mother's father, and find yourself a wife there, among the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. May the sovereign God bless you. May he make you fruitful and give you a multitude of descendants. Then you will become a large nation. May he give you and your descendants the blessing he gave to Abraham, so that you may possess the land God gave to Abraham, the land where you have been living as a temporary resident. So Isaac sent Jacob on his way, and he went to Padan Aram, the Laban son of Bithuel, the Aramean, and brother of Rebekah, the mother of Jacob and Esau. Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him off to Paden Aram to find a wife there. As he blessed him, Isaac commanded him, you must not marry a Canaanite woman. Jacob obeyed his father and mother and left for Paden Aram. Then Esau realized that the Canaanite women were displeasing to his father Isaac. So Esau went to Ishmael and married Mahalath, the sister of Nebaioth, and daughter of Abraham's son Ishmael, along with the wives he already had. Meanwhile, Jacob left for Beersheba and sent out for Haran. He reached a certain place where he decided to camp because the sun had gone down. He took one of the stones and placed it near his head. Then he fell asleep in that place and had a dream. He saw a stairway erected on the earth with its top reaching to the heavens. The angels of God were going up and coming down it 
and the Lord stood at its top. He said, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather Abraham, and the God of your father Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the ground you are lying on. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and east, north and south. All the families of the earth will pronounce blessings on one another using your name and that of your descendants. I am with you. I will protect you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. Then Jacob woke up and thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, but I did not realize it. He was afraid and said, What an awesome place this is. This is nothing else than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early in the morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed near his head and set it up as a sacred stone. Then he poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, although the former name of the town was Luz. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God is with me and protects me on this journey I am taking, and gives me food to eat and clothing to wear, and I return safely to my father's home, then the Lord will become my God. Then this stone that I have set up as a sacred stone will be the house of God, and I will surely give back a tenth of everything you give me. God, I love the end of chapter 28. Here we see Jacob uh, leaving the household, probably to save his life. He's being sent out to find a wife to go back to the relatives, just like uh, the servants were sent for Isaac the generation before. And here's Jacob. He comes from this very, very strong faith-based family, Abraham and then Isaac and now Jacob. And part of the reason that the servants were sent out to find a relative for Isaac was because Abraham was concerned for about Isaac leaving the faith or being drawn away from faith by, by somebody who wasn't faith-based, by someone who didn't believe in God. And even though they're sending Jacob out now for the same reason, we see in chapter 28, Jacob isn't so sure about you. And I know there's people listening right now that aren't so sure about you. They may not believe you exist. They may believe you exist, but aren't quite sure what that looks like for them. Or maybe it's something that they're thinking they may want as far as relationship, but they're not sh quite sure what that looks like. And, and here we have Jacob, who reminds me of, of myself and a lot of other people where, where we grew up in a church. We might have grown up with a family with strong Christian values even. Yet at some point, we have to leave the house and we have to find our own faith. And I remember always having a, a different relationship with you than the one that the church I was going to talked about. Um, the relationship I had with you seemed a little bit more personal. But when I left my family and went away to college... I really pushed away that relationship. Uh, I went looking for everything but that relationship. And then instead of just relying on my parents' faith or the faith that I thought I had to have or the faith that I thought the church had told me I had to have, I needed to go on this journey to figure out who you were in my life. And what I love is you are unique to every one of us. As we encounter you, all of our stories are so different, and that's so incredible. And now we get to hear about Jacob, who is, is on a journey. He's leaving a very heavily faith-based family who truly believes in you and your promises. And he's talking to you, so he does know you exist. But he's not too sure about how that looks in his life. And we, we actually don't get to see the full-fledged part of that relationship develop until later on in Genesis. But I love what he says. I'm going to this, place this one rock. I'm not going to build you a whole alt altar, God. 
I'm going to place this one rock. I'm going to dip my toe into the water. And I'm going to see how things go. And if I get through the rest of this journey, I am so calling you my god. And I kind of imagine when we say that to you, that you kind of chuckle a little bit. Because we don't get quite yet just how big you are and how amazing you are and how powerful you are. And, and in all honesty, I don't think we ever do. But at that moment, we have no concept of what you can do for us. Or what you're willing to do for us. Or how much you love us. But I just get so excited when people are ready to hand you that first rock. And say... God, I, I don't know what this looks like. I think you exist. Not sure. But I'm going to, in faith, place this first rock here. And then as I see how things go, Jacob makes a promise to come back and build an altar there at Bethel. And not to give anything away, but he eventually comes back and does that. So God, I get really, really excited that there's people listening right now to your word, hearing the story about Jacob and going, yeah, I'm there. I'm not too sure about this whole Christianity, church, God relationship thing. And I don't know about all that, but I am willing to take this one rock And I'm willing to, on faith, place it forward and ask, God, can we kind of walk together and I see what this looks like so that I can call you my God? We never chose God. God chose us. But if you'll just place your hand out with that, that one stone on it, that first stone of the altar, and just ask him to show you what that path looks like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Amazing, incredible, awesome, inspiring, and miraculous things will start to happen. He's already there. He's already been there walking beside you the whole time, but... I suspect, God, that you get excited when somebody is ready with that first stone to say, all right, I'll see how this goes. So today, God, I just ask blessings and prayers and, and faith for people who are listening right now that are looking down and going, yeah, I got that rock. <laughs> okay. I got that first stone. I'm not sure what to do with it. And it, it's okay because I know... I know, God, that if they just hold that out a little bit, that you will become all the strength and all the energy that they need to move forward, that you will support and encourage them and hold them and cradle them as you start to walk forward. God, today I just pray for them. I pray for this awesome journey that they're about to take, asking Jesus to come and live in their heart. Asking you to forgive them of everything and all the burdens that are holding them back from turning over that first rock to you to build that altar. Romans 10 says, if, if I simply declare with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and I believe with all my heart that God raised him from the dead, that I will be saved. That I will get to start that journey with you. God, I just pray for those people today. I pray also that as they, in faith, hand over that first rock, I ask that you put people in their life to help them, to help guide them, to strengthen them, to teach them. Discipleship is a relationship. It's not a drive-by, hand somebody a Bible. It's a relationship and I just ask for amazing relationships to happen in these people's lives that if they don't already have a, a an amazing church that's teaching your word God 
that you will find that church for them. That if they don't already have a community of faith-based believers to help support their decisions and their choices, that you start putting people in their lives today, God. And God, I already know that you will provide them the food and the clothing and everything else they need. But they may not know that. So I do ask for reassurances for them. Encouragement as they take the step forward in faith. As they take the step forward into your arms. God, I just ask blessings over their lives. So that they can go on to glorify you and do amazing, incredible things in your name. Thank you, God. Thank you for those rocks in our lives, for those things that allow us to move forward in faith. We love you so much. In your son's name we pray. 